Hi folks, welcome to our online version of Rockus. We're also streaming live on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock on our Facebook, which is Journey Cafe 320, and on our Instagram, which is Journey Cafe underscore 320. So you can tune in there uh, live next Wednesday also at 7 p.m. So we've been talking about movies all year long. Our series is called Behind the Scenes, Big Ideas from the Big Screen. And we're looking at different movies and different messages that we can, can get from those godly messages, things that we can apply to our lives by just taking a look at some interesting movies. Now, our topic tonight is curveball, dealing with the unexpected. Now in baseball, it's a battle between the pitcher and the hitter. The pitcher's trying to fool the hitter and strike him out, and the hitter, of course, is trying to hit the ball and get a home run. And uh, if a pitcher's throwing a lot of fastballs, they're nice and flat usually, and they're pretty predictable. Of course, they're fast, they're, they can still be hard to hit, but a, a smart pitcher will throw in a bunch of trick pitches, like a curveball, and that really is one of the first trick pitches ever developed. And a curveball will spin and drop and move and do all sorts of strange things in order for the uh, pitcher to fool and deceive the hitter. And so uh, curveballs are hard to hit. Unless you can lock in on it, then it becomes an opportunity. A hanging curveball is the kind of a, the pitch that you can, you can uh, totally smack out of the ballpark if you, can, if you can detect it. But most of the times, curveballs are really hard to predict and they, they come out of nowhere. And so the term curveball has been used um, to denote a unexpected challenge that comes out of nowhere, an unexpected setback that just shows up out of nowhere. And in life, we get thrown curveballs, right? And sometimes life throws us an unexpected curveball, an unexpected setback. And right now, we're all facing an unexpected setback, and that setback is the coronavirus, right? Okay, that is something that's just holding people back. It's shutting things down. Uh, it shut down the schools, it shut down everything, right? And uh, initially everybody was like, wow, school's, school's off, everybody was excited. But that excitement wore off uh, really quickly. So it, it's, it's becoming a, an unexpected thing that's challenging people. It's challenging a lot of people who had expectations for things that were gonna occur. I know a lot of uh, high school musicals, plays are being shut down, sports are being shut down. I even know some weddings that had to get canceled because of uh, this virus, okay? The, they, they got canceled and that, that caused a lot of trouble for people, a lot of disappointment for people. So that's an unexpected curveball. And certainly for the people that have contracted this virus, they didn't see that coming. And it's really an unexpected challenge. It's a real curveball in their life. So this, this thing has really set everybody off on a tizzy and how do you deal with things like this? How do you deal with life's curveballs? So we're going to take a look at three movies that have three different ways, I think, of looking at and dealing with unexpected uh, curveballs of life, unexpected challenges. The first is cars. Now, we talked about cars a few weeks ago, and we focused in on Lightning McQueen. This time I want to focus in on the town where Lightning got stuck, and that was Radiator Springs. Now, Radiator Springs represents a town in the southwest of the United States, like Arizona or someplace like that. And in the movie, um, they kind of do a flashback back into the good old days of Radiator Springs. And that was when Route 66 went through the town and everybody who was traveling from east to west had to go through Radiator Springs. And the economy there was great. The economy was booming. Everybody was happy. And uh, Route 66 really is a real highway that really was the main corridor from east to west. And it blessed a lot of towns along, along the way. But then something unexpected happens. And that unexpected thing is that a superhighway was built just south of the town, bypassing Route 66 and bypassing Radiator Springs. Now, that unexpected curveball was met with uh, at least uh, uh, some optimism by the town, and they put out a big band that said, welcome interstate travelers. Well, the sad fact is the interstate travelers never stopped. They never came 
do Radiator Springs anymore. They just kept flying down the highway at 75 miles an hour, and they bypassed the town. And that unexpected thing, uh, highway caused another unexpected thing, which was a massive economic downturn for the community, okay? And so Radiator Springs had to react to that unexpected downturn. And, and really what happened was they all got uh, lazy, they got bored, they got tired, they got run down. Uh, they were unmotivated, they were uninspired. Some of them even got sad and depressed and, and feeling hopeless. And that can happen. When some unexpected thing happens in your life, you can start to feel those ways. You can start to feel defeated and down and, and just you just don't want to deal with it. And you, you kind of think, this is going to be the way it is forever now. And it can really demotivate you. It can even make you, you know, depressed. And I've got a question for some of you guys. Do some of you feel that way? Do some, are some of you guys reacting this way? You know, staying up super late, sleeping in super late, just feel listless, feel unmotivated, some of you feeling sad, a lot of people are just doing this and just, um, you know, spending all day and all night on their phones or playing video games and, and just kind of depressed by the whole situation, demotivated by the whole virus situation. Are you, are you feeling that way? A lot of people are reacting to this in different ways. Maybe that's how you're reacting to it. Well, Maybe on the surface that doesn't seem so bad, but the Bible gives us a little warning, actually a big warning about it. It says, idle or lazy hands are the devil's workshop, and idle slash lazy lips are his mouthpiece. So we can have an unexpected downturn, and it just demotivates us, makes us idle, makes us not want to do anything, and that becomes an avenue for evil to encroach into our lives. And if we're not careful, uh, idleness can lead to a lot of trouble. And so this might not be the best way to react to unexpected setbacks or challenges. The next movie we're going to look at um, really talks about a, a, a bad way of dealing with unexpected changes, and that's Toy Story. Now, we're not going to be focusing in on Woody and Buzz this time. We're going to be focusing in on their nemesis, which was Sid in the movie. Now, you may say, Dan, how are you going to talk about unexpected changes with Sid? Well, I, I, I look at Sid and I wonder, okay, Sid was a kid who uh, just had a really bad attitude, he was angry, he was bitter, and he loved to torture toys and disfigure them and create freaky monster toys, and he would take his sister's toys and mutilate them and rebuild them and scare her with, a, with those toys, and he, he had a really angry, bitter attitude and, and way of living. And I think to myself, what happened to Sid, okay? Maybe you never thought about that, but do you think Sid was always like this? See, you know, when kids are little, they, they play with their toys, but they don't turn them into freaks and monsters. They, they might, you know, play rough and hard, but I, I kind of think something happened to Sid. If there was some unexpected setback or something that changed in his life, maybe he had some kind of family breakup or some kind of family tension, and it changed him. Maybe he was bullied at school, and uh, and that was an unexpected setback in his life. Maybe he was abused in some way. I don't know, but whatever whatever happened to him, whatever unexpected curveball happened in his life, his reaction became to lash out at others and to hurt others and to be angry with others and to abuse others himself. And so he took his his frustrations, his anger out on toys and then torturing his little sister, okay? So, you know, that can happen to us too, right? We have to be careful because we can get angry and we can lash out too when we get setbacks in life that are curveballs. The Bible says these times are evil, okay? These are evil times, right? These are evil times. And um, you can just take a look at the news, look at all the evil things that are going on in the world. and. And, you know, evil is crouching at our door. we got to be careful to watch out that we don't get embittered by these changing circumstances. And, uh, you know, this is a cliche, too. People think this is a cliche. You're only a few clicks away from evil. You know, your phone is, is, an, is a powerful tool, but it's also a gateway to get into some really bad stuff that can really lead into some evil directions if you allow it that way. So... 
That's what I'm saying. You know, when we have this unexpected setback, this curveball in life, we start to get lazy and lackadaisical. We start to get into the phones more and more. And then we're just a couple of clicks away from really getting into some bad stuff. And I think you guys can imagine what that might be. So the third movie we want to look at is totally opposite. It's another reaction to the unexpected. And it is a movie called Soul Surfer. Now, Soul Surfer is about a young girl in Hawaii named Bethany. And Bethany is an incredible surfer, and she's moving up the ranks in, um, in all these surf competitions, and her goal in life is to become a professional surfer. And uh, things are going great for her. Things are going great. She's in all these competitions, okay? And uh, then when she's 13 years old, she's out surfing one morning, and all of a sudden, something very unexpected happens. And a 14-foot shark comes along and literally chews her arm off, tears her arm off. She loses her arm. Now, when something like that happens, you lose a lot of blood. She lost 60% of her blood and she went into a shock. Uh, thank God people that were there to put on a tourniquet and, um, and they rushed her to the hospital. God was with her and she, she survived. She survived. But... She came out of the hospital with one arm. Now, can you imagine having one arm? It's extremely difficult to imagine. But one morning, Bethany woke up and she had two arms. Then the shark attack happened, and the next day she had only one arm. So things that she took for granted, like putting on her clothes or, or tying her shoe or fixing her hair, those things became just about impossible for her to do. So this was a major unexpected setback in just working with the basic things of life. But it also threw her into a, a fear that she was going to never get on a surfboard again. Like her career goals were completely wiped out by this, by this uh, attack. And that's understandable. And she could, have, she could have reacted in a really negative way. She could have got depressed. She could have given up. She could have got lazy and said, you know, I'm, I'm just done. I'm never going to do this again. She could have got angry. She could have started lashing out at her family and, and those around her. But she didn't do any of that stuff. What she did was she relied on God. See, Bethany trusted in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ promises to be with us now and forevermore. He said he will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. And Bethany trusted in Jesus Christ as a young child, as her Savior. And she was walking with him and in relationship with him for her life. And when this shark attack occurred, Bethany relied on Jesus to help her through that. Now, the amazing thing is, in the movie, three weeks later, after the shark attack, she got back on the, on the surfboard. And she it was a challenge. She couldn't do it at first, but finally she got up and she was able to ride the waves. Within 10 weeks, she was in a surfing competition. 10 weeks after the attack, she was already in a surfing competition. So her attitude was, was positive. Her attitude was, was, God's got me in this. He's going to help carry me through this. And, um, and it was, it's an amazing story. Now, the thing about Soul Surfer, unlike the other two movies, Toy Story and Cars, those are made-up movies. Soul Surfer is a true story. It is a true story about a girl named Bethany Hamilton, and there she is in the middle. Um, she's a, an adult now, and uh, she didn't allow this shark attack to destroy her. As a matter of fact, she allowed God to use this to do something even greater in her life. She went on to write a book called Soul Surfer, which the movie's based on. And then she um, became a public speaker. She was on TV. She started doing like talks all around the USA. Then she formed an organization called Friends of Bethany. And that group helps uh, amputee, young amputees uh, come to know Christ Jesus as their savior and help them through that, that process of dealing with that challenge. And so her life got completely... <laughs> just completely amazingly amplified by this terrible, uh, this terrible attack. And she allowed God to work in her in an amazing way. And I'm, I'm glad to tell you too that she got married. She has two kids. She's still a pro surfer. She's like attacking these crazy gigantic waves. Um, she just made a, a movie last year called Overcomer, which looks really interesting about overcoming these gigantic waves and, and stuff. So she's, she's, she's overcoming that. And her attitude was was one of trusting in Jesus, trusting
trusting in God to help her and, and looking for the good in all situations. And so that's a, that's a totally different attitude. And, you know, I think about her faith and her faith is in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, he, Jesus Christ suffered the most terrible of, of uh, torturous deaths. And that's what, we, that's what we're about ready to celebrate with um, Good Friday and Easter coming up. And the Bible says this about Jesus. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. By his blood being shed, he paid for the sins of the world. Your sins, my sins, all the sins of the world. Jesus is God come, who came to this earth in the form of a man. He lived a sinless life. And his life was a one-way mission to end up on a cross and be killed willingly for our sins. We could never pay the, the, the cost of all the sins we've done against God, but Jesus paid it all in one amazing thing. It says this, uh, later on in 1 Peter says, Christ suffered for our sins once and for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. Okay, he, he did this for you. He did this so that we could stand before God one day blameless. Uh, our, our, our sins were pay, are paid for in one amazing act, once and for all time, by Jesus. And when you trust in him, when you trust in his sacrifice, when you believe that he is Lord and Savior, you're saved. You are saved and you have eternal life and he brings you back home again to God. Okay, he suffered that physical death, that terrible death of being nailed to a Roman cross. But he was raised three days later in the, to life in the spirit. He was at one time witnessed by 500 people at one time. And if that was in a court today, they'd have 500 witnesses to say, we saw the risen Jesus. That would be a slam dunk case in Jesus' favor. Jesus was raised from the dead, okay? And if he's raised from the dead, that proves he is God and he's worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be believed, he's worthy to be honored, and he's worthy to be trusted as your Lord and Savior. Bethany Hamilton trusted him and trusted him to this day, and you should as well. We can all trust in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Trust in Jesus and be saved. And, and, and trust in him um, in the good times and the bad times, right? And so he is, he's, he's our, our, our loving Savior who wants to help us through these tough challenges, these curveballs of life. So what about us? What about us? How should we respond to unexpected setbacks? How should we respond to curveballs in life? How should we deal with those kinds of things? Well, we could do what Radiator Springs did and just give into it. We can just say, I'm, I'm going to sleep late. I'm going to get on my phone all day. I'm going to just play video games. I'm going to just... Not, not improve my life, not do anything good. I'm just going to deal with it the best way I can and, and sink down into this kind of a reality, this kind of resignation. Um, I don't recommend this. This is not, not going to bless your life and it's going to open your, the door of your life to bad influences. So you can give into it. I don't recommend it. I think there's a better way. The second option is to do what Sid did and go negative. Now, again, we don't know what the setback was in his life, the curveball was in his life, but he went negative. And there's lots of ways for us to go negative when bad things happen. A lot of people do this kind of stuff, like they go to drugs or they go to porno or something that just kind of numb the pain of their life and just numb the reality. And they internalize that and that becomes like an attack on themselves. Or some people do this and, and they they externalized their, their anger and their rage. These are the two guys that shot up Columbine High School in 1999. And um, they reminded me of like real life SIDS, except they didn't torture toys and kill toys. They kill real people, okay? They took whatever setbacks and challenges and, and curveballs in their life, they got angry, and then, then they went and took that anger out on innocent people. Going negative is not a good option at all. Whatsoever. So the third option is to do what Bethany Hamilton did. She got attacked by a 14-foot shark that almost killed her. And she stayed with God the whole time. She trusted in Jesus the whole time. And Jesus blessed her through that, carried her through that storm, and is using her in a mighty, mighty way now to bless other people. That's what you can do. So what should we do in times that are unexpected? What should we do like in this, this crazy time? 
The Bible says, act like people with good sense and not like fools. These times are evil, so make every minute count. We can be wise and do something really good, or we can do something really foolish and evil. Okay? We got to watch out. So we should make every minute count. Imagine if you did some chores around the house and blessed your family in this time when you have some time on your hands to do that. They might think aliens came and abducted you and, and put other kids there. But I'll tell you what, your parents will be extremely, extremely glad that you did that. So make every minute count. Find ways to make every minute count. Life is a gift. You know, make it count in the present of now. Make, make it count. Find, find a way to... Uh, add, add a blessing to your life. Add a blessing to your world, okay? How about this? How about taking some time, because we all have a lot of time, to get to know Jesus better, to get to know his word better. better. Study his word. Pray, excuse me, pray to God. Tell him your struggles. Tell him your trials. Tell him your challenges. Tell him your thoughts. Get to know him and get to commune with him in this time when we do have a lot of extra uh, hours on our hands, a lot of extra days on our hands. Get to know him. That is not a waste of time. That's making every minute count uh, to get to know your Lord and Savior, Jesus. That's what I would recommend to you. The Bible says this also. This is my last verse. It says, let's think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. So we can also make every minute count by trying to think of good things to do, right? Um, right now, we are working on trying to set up a, a phone ministry to call elderly people in the church. We'd like to get young people involved in doing that just to encourage them and talk to them every day and see how they're doing and bless their lives. That's one thing we're working on right now. We're also doing um, this online Zoom uh, video chat thing where we, you know, you can come and talk, talk to different people in the church, different Bible studies. We have Randy giving his message on Sunday and people talking about it. We have Zoom chats uh, after Rockus every Wednesday. We're going to get, be getting things like Forge and stuff like that going again. But you can reach out and talk to your friends, see how they're doing, and still commune and encourage one another and motivate each other. So that's the message tonight. We are going to face curveballs in life, every single one of us. How are you going to deal with it? How are you going to deal with it? I strongly recommend that you build your relationship with Christ Jesus, your Savior, and walk with him in the good times and the bad. He will bless you no matter what. So let's pray and uh, we're going to wrap this up. So let's bow our heads. Father God, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for uh, what you've done for us. Jesus, you came to this earth and uh, you lived that sinless life. And you came to this earth because you loved us. And um, the cross was before you and yet you still went went on it and you, you could have said no I don't, I don't need to do that but you loved us so much that you, you willingly went on that cross you were nailed to it your blood was shed you were killed for our sins for our transgressions for our crimes against you oh God and you paid for that Jesus you paid for our our crimes against you our sins against you with your love and with your blood we thank you for that we thank you for saving us we thank you for taking something so terrible as the cross and making something so beautiful out of it, the beautiful sacrifice uh, that you made for us so you could welcome us home someday. We thank you for that gift. And Lord, you know that we're in, tr we're in troubled times, we're in tough times. Uh, there's a curveball being thrown at us. Some face a lot worse ones, but we all are facing a curveball. Help us to be wise in this time. Help us to face it with faith in you. Help empower us to do good works and to bless people around us. Bless our families, bless our, our, our friends, help inspire us to do the right thing and help us to resist the evil that wants to drag us down. We thank you for your love. We thank you so much, Jesus, for coming to this earth. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for being with us in the good times and the bad. And we just lift this time unto you, Lord. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.